Tonight's share is on the topic of Kabbalat Torah and its relevance to us. Hope everyone can hear me. I start off by bringing Sefer Lev David, Rabbeinu Achida, in Perik Lamed Aleph, in his Ma'amar Shavuot, where he writes a very well-known fact. Every year when we come up to the Yamim Tovim, it's like the first year when the Yom Tov originally came. It's coming back to us. We're really going, we're going through again the Yom Tov. And those same Orot, those same Kohot, which revealed itself when the Yom Tov was given originally, reveal itself every single year. In other words, the Yom Tov is not just a commemoration. It's not just a Zeicher, the Matan Torah. It is a Kabbalat Torah. It's an actual receiving of the Torah again. Everyone knows Shavuot, how Klal Yisrael, Am Yisrael Kedoshim, we stay up the whole night. Most people, we pray early in the morning. And the time when the Torah is, is read, that is the time of the Kabbalat Torah, when we are again receiving and accepting upon ourselves and our children to attain our Kedosha. And then the Chida adds, not only on the Yom Tov itself, but Yamim Hashanah Ubay Mayudim Lifnea Gado Bemala, on these days, is starting tomorrow night, Rosh Chodesh Sivan, when Kalal Yisrael came as a nation to Har Sinai. Ahar Hamad Elohim Har Sinai Zeh. Minahu v'halah yamim alalu kodeshem. Those days, these days, every single year, holy days, um sugalim li taher. They have a segula to purify one. As you know, that according to all customs, according to all minagim, the days leading up from Rosh Chodesh Sivan to Shavuot, we do not say tahanunim. It's written in Shulchan Aruch. Because these days are holy days. It's not only the Yom Tov itself, but the day, days leading up to the Yom Tov have got the same Kedusha as it had then when Kalal Yisrael they came to, to Har Sinai. The Afghan Zot Yamim Tovim Luklot Anava Kachayale the Yamim Mishonim. We're able to acquire the traits of humility like Kalal Yisrael did in that tremendous Ma'amad when they stood in front of Hashem on Har Sinai. And he says, this is the meaning of what we say in the Haggadah. If if HaKadosh Baruch Hu would have brought us just to Har Sinai and he wouldn't in the end have given us the Torah, it would be enough, it would be sufficient. Because what Klal Yisrael reached, the levels they reached in the Ma'amad Har Sinai before Shavuot, for that alone it would, be, it would have sufficed. Then Ken, and therefore, says the Chida, 
If we awaken ourselves in these days, with humility and wanting to understand the Torah according to each one according to his Madrega, there's no doubt that the time will help him. Much, much more than any other time of the year. This time is misugal more than any other time of the year for purification, for understanding the Torah, for acquiring good midot. <coughs> So first of all, I want to explain what the meaning of Kabbalah Torah is. As we explained, we're all preparing ourselves for Kabbalah Torah. Not just a zeicher of Kabbalah Torah. We're actually going to receive the Torah. What does it mean to accept the Torah? What does it mean in Kabbalah Torah? Kabbalah Torah doesn't mean a person is Shomer Shabbat. Kabbalah Torah doesn't mean a person keeps Tarat HaMishpacha. Kabbalah Torah means a person Pshutoke Mashmoz Mekabal upon himself Kol HaTorah Kula Me'alef Ataf As the Mishnah says in Sanhedrin If a person says Kol HaTorah Kula Emet the whole Torah, I'm willing to be Mechabal. The whole Torah is true. It's Mina Shemayim. Except for one Pasuk. Even if that Pasuk seemingly is the least significant Pasuk, the Gemara gives the example if he says, Lotan Timna. The sister of Lotan was Timna. Who was Lotan? We don't even know who's Lotan. From Seir. He had a sister called Timna. Thank you very much. Is that so important? If a person thinks that that pasuk is not significant, that pasuk is not mina shemaim, he's denied the Torah. He hasn't made a Kabbalah Torah. When Kalal Yisrael with the Kabbalah Torah says, Kol asher dibay Adonai na'aseh benishma. All that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has told us and will tell us, we will do and we will accept. That means Kabbalah Torah. Kabbalah Torah means to accept the whole Torah in its entirety. But that's not the, the end of the story. The person who says, I'm willing to accept the whole Torah and coming now Shavuot and planning and thinking in my mind to accept upon myself the whole Torah in its entirety. <coughs> That's not yet the end of the story. Because a person has to know why he's accepting the Torah. What is the purpose behind it? I'm accepting the Torah, but for what reason? If he doesn't know the purpose, he's missing the whole Yehud. And this HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the very next day, on Bet Resivan, on the day after he arrived in Hasinai, before HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us anything about Matan Torah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us the purpose why he brought us to this mountain. We call that day Yom HaMiyuchas, a special day. Ve'atem ti'yuli mamlechet kohanim ve'goy kadosh. You have to know what I want from you. What is the purpose of the Kabbalat Torah that you should be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation? These are the words that I want you to say to the Bnei Israel. Rashi says, Eile adevarim, lo pachot velo yoter. 
Nothing different. This is exactly the words that I want you to say over to the B'nai so. We have to know that we have a purpose, a tachlit, in keeping the Torah. The tachlit is to be a mamlechet kohanim, a kingdom of priests. What does it mean, a kingdom of priests? What is the job of a priest, of a kohen? What's the job of a kohen? To be misharet hakadosh baruch hu. Shluchet derachmanan in hu. They're the shlichim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They're the ones who serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says the tafkid of every single Jewish person in, in accepting the Torah is they should be prepared at all time to serve Borei Olam. Vegoi Kadosh and to be a holy nation to be a nation different from the other nations. Holiness, Rashi explains in Parsha Kedoshim, Prushim to you. We shouldn't indulge ourselves in all our ta'avot. We should be able to restrain ourselves, to act with restraint. To hold back from doing things that we want to do, that we fancy to do. That's a Goy Kadosh, a holy nation. <coughs> that is our Yehud. That is our purpose. If a person he accepts the whole Torah, comes Shavuot, and he says, I'm willing to accept the whole Torah, now seven Ishma. He doesn't know the purpose. He doesn't understand what it's all about. If he doesn't understand the purpose is to be Mamlechet Kohanim Begoy Kadosh, Ika Hasem Mina Sefer. Mechilta says, What does it say after this? Says the Mechilta, Lo anu b'chanufa, ele ma'ana shel emet. When Hashem said, I want to hear, are you willing to be my mamlechet kohani begoi kadosh? Vayanu kol ha'am. Everyone answered, Lo anu b'chanufa. They didn't say just to please HaKadosh Baruch They answered, ma'ana shel emet. Yachtav. Bayanu kolam yachtav. They all together answered. Says the Mechilta. Lo kiblu ze mize. El hushvu kulam levechat. What does that mean? They didn't look at each other and see, what is my friend going to say? And then I'll respond. They didn't look at each other to see what the other one was saying and thinking. I see what he says. Sometimes you're not sure what to do. So you see what your friend says and you copy him. So I says no. Together with the same intent. Bayomu kol ashe di ber Hashem naase. We are accepting whatever Hashem has said just now. We are accepting to be Mamlechet Kohanim Begoy Kadosh. So now we understand what the mean Kabbalat Torah. Kabbalat HaTorah means to accept upon ourselves and our children the keeping of the whole Torah without any exception. 
on the understanding that we are doing this in order to be a nation of priests, to nation of serving a Kadosh Baruch Hu and a holy nation, a nation which is raised up, which is different from the other nations of the world. On the third day, we call those days the third, fourth, and fifth of Nisan, of Sivan, the Shloshet Yemei Hagbala, the three days of the border, border, the boundary. Those were the days when HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a boundary. The Pasuk says, am saviv lemo. You must make a boundary around the mountain and say, or the boundary should express as if it's saying, Be very careful from going up the mountain and even touching part of it. Anyone who goes and touches the mountain is Chayab Mita. You mustn't touch it with your hand. You mustn't go up it, you mustn't touch it. What is the significance of this mitzvah? What is the significance of this mitzvah? Rav Shamshin Nafal Hesh, in his explanation of the Torah, he explains as follows. He says, the only religion which didn't start from the people is the Jewish religion. All the other religions, a person came and said, this is, this is what we have to do. Whether it's Christianity or it's Islam. They said, this is what we have to do. The religion came from the people. It came from down here. There was no revelation. Mimela, such a religion, we understand that it has to develop with the time. Because it was, it was given at a specific time, in a specific period. And therefore, when the period and the time changes, so the religion also has to develop accordingly. But our religion... did not come from human beings at any time. That Israel nitnu le'adam epi Hashem. Ubahem ne'ema le'bnei ha'adam ma'yu ha'shkafotahem le'fi retzon Hashem b'chol ha'zmanim al odot ha'adam ma'asav. The Torah comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And in it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells him what is his wishes for us, mankind, for all time. <coughs> the Torah which is divine does not mean, need to be developed. The eternal values of the Torah, which was given from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is for all time. And therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us to make a mechitza, to make a boundary. We are down here, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there. To teach us the Torah came not from down here. The Torah came mechutz latchum. The Torah is divine. The Torah was revealed. It didn't come from the people. It came from Shemayim. understanding Loti Gaboyat we mustn't touch with our hands the Torah you know when a person gets an Aliyah to the Sefer Torah he mustn't touch the Torah the scroll with his hands we know Uzzah he wanted to hold on to the Aaron with his hands <clears throat> and the Kaddish Baruch who punished him there's a remiss about this we're not supposed to handle the Torah. 
We're supposed to learn the Torah. We're not supposed to handle it. We're not supposed to put our hands on it and start to explain it according to our understandings, to develop it according to our times, according to our reasoning, according to what suits us. Loti Gaboyat, the Torah says. Do not put your hand on it. The Torah is something which comes far beyond what we can ever understand. It comes from Chutz Letchum. It comes from a different sphere. And therefore, the Torah applies Lechol Adam, Bechol Azmanim. To every person, to every time. The next point I want to speak about is Esh. We spoke about it on Shabbat. Kod devarai ke esh neumashem. My words are like fire. The Torah was given in fire. The fire came on the mountain. What is the significance of this? I want to explain it according to what the Gemara says in Shabbat of Pehet Amud Aleph. On the Pasuk, and they sat and they stood at the bottom of the mountain. Says the Gemara, Melamed Shekafale Mahake Gigit. From here we learn that Kadesh Baruch Hu took the mountain and held it over them. They stood underneath the mountain. HaKadosh Baruch raised the mountain above their heads. And he said to them, If you are willing to accept the Torah, good. And if not there, you will be buried. Put the mountain on you and it's over. It's Tosu asked a very simple question. Tosu said, I don't understand this Gemara. Kalal Yisrael had already agreed to accept the Torah. They already said, Nah, seven Ishma. Why did Kazbok have to force them into it? They already agreed. What was the necessity of turning the mountain on top of their heads? They already agreed. Why did they have to, why did they have, to have their arms twisted? <coughs> says Tosfot Shema yu chozrim kesh yu ha'esh ha'gedula she'atza nishmatan Maybe they'll change their mind when they'll see the big fire As we know Kalal Yisrael out of the great fright that they had in Har Sinai with fire and thunder and lightning and trembling Yatsa Nishmatan Parha Nishmatan the Nishamas left them because Yisrael had to put the Nishamas back so when Kalal Yisrael will see this fire and they get this fright they might change their mind they say we, we don't want to accept such a Torah so because Yisrael has forced them that they shouldn't change their mind so I have the question so why bring the fire in the first place Kalal Yisrael accepted the Torah. They said, Now seven have Nishma. No boss. We're worried that when they see the fire, they'll be frightened and change their mind. So why bring the fire? Why should Hashem bring the fire? Give it gently. Give the Torah in a very gentle way. In a very sweet way. With no pachat. They said, Now have seven Nishma. Let them have it now. It's a nice present, a nice gift, gift wrapped. So I want to answer. The Torah wants to teach us, because Baruch wants to teach us. Torah has to be with fire. Torah has to be kept with fire. It has to be kept with passion. 
mustn't be kept like a cold subject. An intellectual, abstract, philosophical learning and study. So it has to be with esh, with passion. With kol ramach evara b'shasagidav, with all one's limbs. The Shokhanach says, when a person learns Torah, he should shake his body. It says in the Pasuk, Bayara am bayanu'u. Clarisol shook. Why should we shake our bodies when we receiving, when we're learning Torah? To connect ourselves to Mamad Ha Sinai. Where Clarisol is shook. What's the what's the inyam of this? We should learn with all our Amach Ebarim Bishasagidim. If a person accepts the Torah, he knows why he's keeping the Torah. But the Torah, he learns it in a cold way. He might learn the Torah. The Torah might remain with him. But eventually, there will be no Torah left. In future generations, there will be a cut. And this I want to explain also what the Chazal said. Kafale ma'ake gigit akashbok to the mountain, and he held over them, and he says, Imate mekabli meta Torah. If you will accept the Torah, it doesn't mean if you will accept the Torah because they already said Nasa It means if you will accept the Torah with fire, with excitement, with passion. Mutav is good. Ve'im love, and if not, if you're cold about it, you treat it like any other subject, sham teheke buratchem. It'll be buried over there, not here. Over there it'll be buried. Later on, in future generations, that Torah will not be able to continue. I want to explain with this also the Gemara in Shabbat, Kufla Menchet Amud Bet. The Gemara says, Atida Torah shitishtakach Misrael. The Chachamim and Kerem Beyavna, they said, in future generations, the Torah will be forgotten from Klan Israel. Shenev, as it says in the Pasuk in the Navi, Yeshotetu levakesh et devar Hashem velo yimtzau. People will go to search for the devar Hashem, they will not find it. Rav Shem Baruchai argued, and he said, no. Chas v'shalom, shetishtakach Torah Mishraim. Shenev, ki lo tishakach mi pizaro. What is the understanding? What is the understanding of this machloket? Hachamim said, one pasuk says, Yeshot to live a kesh in Dvar Hashem below himself, you won't find the Dvar Hashem. There won't be any Torah left. But the Torah says, Kiloti shakach mi pizao. The way I understand it is, Ha be rabim and ha be yahid. The rabim will be forgotten. Yeshot to, it's talking about the rabbim in plural. Levakesh et devar Hashem velo yimtzau. It's all plural. The rabbim will not have any more Torah. The Torah will be cut from the rabbim, from the Hamon Am Yisrael. From the thousands and millions of Jews who do not, can, are not connected to the Torah anymore, to the life source. And how many more millions who have already mitzbolel amongst the nations of the world? And not part, completely cut off from the limb of the Alice. <coughs> but the Yechidim, Kiloti Shachach Mi Pizar, oh, in the singular. That's what Shem Barichai said. There will be Yechide Sugura. What does it depend on? If we learn Torah with passion, if we keep the mitzvot with passion, with excitement, then it will continue. If we're cold about it, it doesn't bother us. Yes, yes, no, no. 
They do like this, fine. They don't do like this, fine. Everything is mekubal. Everything is accepted. That toilet doesn't remain. It's going to be cut. As you know, it says in the Perek, Hevei mitchamem keneged uran shel chachamim. Warm yourselves up by the fire of the chachamim. Warm yourselves up by the chachamim who've got fire. Torah is supposed to keep you warm. The chachamim are supposed to have fire in their teachings. That when people come close to them, the Torah will warm them. The next thing we see in, in Matan Torah is humility. Any child comes home from school and you ask him or her, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu give us the Torah on Har Sinai? Every child knows the answer. Huh? Because uh, what's the answer? Because the Torah is, because Har Sinai is a small mountain. What's the Pshat? Without humility, there's no Torah. That is the starting point. The Gemara says in Masech Megillah, Daf Chavtet Amud Aleph, Tarash Bar Kapara, Mai Dichtiv, Lama Tirat Sidun Harim Gavnunim. Yas the bat called the Amra Lahem. A heavenly voice came down and said to all the high mountains, who the Masha explains, they came to make a to, to request the Torah should be given on them. Lama Tirsudin im Sinai. Tiratsudun, the Gemara says, Tirsudin. Why do you want to argue with, why do you want to make a din, a din Torah, Kaviyacho, an argument? Why do you want to make an argument with Sinai? Kulchem ba'alei mumim atem etzel Sinai. All you mountains, you are blemished compared to Sinai. Says the Gemara Menabashi, Hayman de Yahi ba'al mumhu. Person who's proud, not stam, just a bad trait, is a blemished, is a balmu. That's the meaning. Lama tiratsudun harim gavnunim. Gavnunim is lashon o giben o dak. It's a mum, it's a blemish. The Gemara says, In Masechet Sota, Hiniach HaKadosh Baruch Kol Heharim Bagevaot Bishret Shechina Tual HaSinai HaKadosh Baruch left all the other mountains and he said, I want to put my Shechina on HaSinai Why? Shenei Mavet Dakao Shvalua HaKadosh Baruch he likes that which is humble that which is shval ruach, that which is lowly. And the person who was chosen to be the lawgiver of Kalal Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu. Why was he chosen? Why was Moshe Rabbeinu chosen? It says in Perek, Moshe Kibel Torah Me Sinai. Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah from Sinai. But the question is asked. Did he receive the Torah from Sinai or from HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Huh? So why say Moshe Kibet Torah from Sinai? It's telling us the reason why HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Kibet Torah. Hashem said Moshe Rabbeinu be the one to receive the Torah. 
Why? Misinai. Because he learnt from the, from the great Ma'ala of Sinai, the Ma'ala of humility. Moshe Bain was chosen because of his great Ma'ala of humility. As the Pasuk says, when it praises Moshe Rabbeinu, Va'ish Moshe anab me'od mikol ha'adama she'apanei ha'adama. The man Moshe was more humble than all the men on the face of the earth. We heard this week, Stefan Abakasis explained to us, the Kasher Chacham asked in Pirkei Avot, in Pirkei Avot it's written, Me'od me'od de'beish valorach. It's not enough just to be a little bit humble. You have to be very humble, exceedingly humble. A little bit is not enough. As the Rambam says, every middah, you should be in the middle, except for humility. You have to go to the furthest extreme. Lo mine, below mitzata. Not even a little bit of pride, of arrogance. It's a mum. So if the, the peric says, a person should be me'od, me'od. So, but the Pesach says, by Moshe Rabbeinu, ve'ish Moshe anav me'od. Only once. How do we understand it? So, Chamovad, your answers. Ve'ish Moshe anav me'od mikol ha'adama she'a penei ha'adama. From all the people who are on the ground. What's the people on the ground? Are there people in, in, on, the, on the moon? Do people exist anywhere else apart from on the ground? It means the humble people who have, who, who have their nose facing the ground. From all those people who are who are on the ground, who are humble people, he was more humble even than them. Dorchaim HaKodesh Pasha Titro says there's three requisites for Kabbalat Torah. The second one is humility. And he explains it on the Pasuk Vayavo Midbar Sinai They came to Midbar Sinai the Torah cannot rest in a person who is not humble, who is not mashpil himself. The Torah cannot rest in such a person who doesn't make himself like a midbar. Anyone can walk on it. Tefka. That's a sign of a humble person. He doesn't pay attention. People walk on him. People don't treat him with respect. Doesn't bother. The midbah. That's the ikka trait for Kabbalah Torah. What's, this, what's the parasha which we read always before Shavuot? Bamidbar. Because that is the trait before Kabbalah Torah. As the Gemara says on the Pasuk, Everyone who's thirsty should go to the water. Why is it Torah compared to water? Ma mine. The water always goes from a higher place to the lower place. The Torah also goes from the high point, from Shemaim into the low people. So Har Sinai was chosen for his humility. Moshe Bain was chosen for his humility. And Kalal Yisrael were chosen for our humility. It's a pasuk, a 
according to Rashi's interpretation of the Pasuk. Pasuk at the end of Ayat Hanan. Lo meru bechem mikol ha'amim hashak adonai bachem ba'ivhar bachem ki atem ham'at mikol ha'amim. Not because you are so numerous did Hashem choose you. Because you're the smallest of all the nations. It cannot be taken literally. Because we're not the smallest nation. There are nations smaller than Kalalis. So what's the meaning? Rashi says. You don't make yourself big. When everything goes well for you. When Hashem gives us Tova, we recognize it comes from the Rabbi Shalom. It's nothing for us. It's a gift given to us from Hashem. Nothing for us to become proud about. You're the ones who make yourself small. You make yourself small compared to all the nations. You don't take the gedula for yourselves. This is the trait which the Torah tells us. This is the preparation that we need to work on in this time, in these days. Unfortunately, we live in a generation where there is tishtu shagvulot. The boundaries are not clear. The gvulim, which the Torah says, Vigbalta, we're supposed to make gvulim. We're supposed to make boundaries. Have become unclear. Nowadays, everyone is orthodox. We might be modern orthodox. Extremely modern orthodox. We're all orthodox. Only it's how you define orthodoxy. There was a shul in America that members of their congregants who entered into same gender marriages, they wished their Mazel Tov from the synagogue, was sent a Mazel Tov meeting. And it was connected to the OU. They're part of orthodoxy. <coughs> this is the chrayut that we have. That all the leaders of the generation have to spell out what are our boundaries. What does it mean to be within the boundary? And when is it considered we've crossed over a red line? Klal is so with Tamim. They're simple. They need guidance. They look to their leaders for guidance. I'll give an example. Just now this week. The chief rabbi has come out with a guidance of a boundary called a kavodlo. This week. It was advertised in the newspaper a certain lady has become UK's first female orthodox rabbi. When they say orthodox, they mean that she might keep a bunch of mitzvahs. As we know, reform also keep mitzvahs. So the chief rabbi, he made a declaration. Kol kavod. And he, the office of the chief rabbi stated its established position which is, I'm reading you out now, it's written in the paper, quoting, 
There are many leadership roles which we actively encourage women to take up. However, the established position of mainstream orthodoxy across the world is that the role of rabbi or any equivalent position conferred by Samicha cannot be one of them. So what has the chief rabbi done? He's made a boundary. He's told us this is the boundary. There are certain roles that women can take up, but this is not one of it. And if a woman, she does do this, she's no longer considered part of the orthodox fold. Because it's established in mainstream orthodox across the world that we don't do this. However, there is something else which is taking place in the community at this very time. In the Jews College, which is now called London School of Jewish Studies, I don't know if Jewish Studies is inverted commas or not, there is a series of talks about what Jews need to know about Christianity. These talks started after Pesach in the days of Sefirat Omer. This is the preparation of Sefirat Omer according to the Jews' college. This is how we're supposed to prepare ourselves for Kabbalat Torah. The first week there's, there's actually a big nice picture of the founder of Christianity as well on the poster. In case we might be interested to know what he looked like. <laughs> the first week, the talk was about Jesus. The second week was talking about the early days, the rise of the church. The third week, Middle Ages, the church triumphant. The fourth week, which is this week, three days before Shavuot, from Reformation to today. And then, after Shavuot, after we receive the Torah, what do we talk about? What Christians believe and do. And finally, the sixth week, we have a guest Christian scholar to answer questions. That's what's going on round the corner. I can say quite categorically, if it would be a Christian institution which would advertise a series of lectures, what Jews need to know about Christianity, there would be a balagan. There'd be a riot in the community. But because it's in the London School of Jewish Studies, which is the president is the chief rabbi, silence. No one's got anything to say about it. I spoke it over with a few rabbis. Everyone's in shock. No one can understand it. What's the purpose? What are you trying to achieve with this? No one can understand it. So, we wrote a letter to the chief rabbi. We asked him. In the letter, being that the London School of Jewish Studies say that their objectives are the education and training of rabbis, ministers, preachers, readers, and teachers of religion for Jewish communities, and the provision of high Jewish learning for the laity, how can allow and facilitate for Christianity be talked to his audience? We, we said it's our strong opinion that teachings about Jesus and the church have absolutely no place in LSJS. And people who are Jewish or not, who wish to teach and learn about Christianity, can undoubtedly do so in other places. 
and we asked the chief rabbi to intervene with the management of SJS, being that he's the president, to have this course cancelled as soon as possible. That was on the 16th of April. The course is due to start, was due to start on the 24th of April, so it's a week before. We received a response on the 26th of April. Our office acknowledges the receipt of your recent mail. I'm very ashamed to read out what I have to read out. In a Hanukkah shir that was filmed and disseminated widely, Rabbi Basu's past comments about the chief rabbi, which amounted to serious Motsi Shemra, it will be inappropriate for you to communicate further with this office until he withdraws his comments and issues a public apology for them. What does this mean? I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to have to read this out to you. It's like a personal, having a personal feud. Are we worried our, about our personal kabod? Is this what we're after? What is with kabod shemayim? Is that not part of the picture? What did I say in my talk in Hanukkah? The JW3, which had as a banner that they're unashamedly celebrating the lives of people who according to the Torah are doing Maaseh Toeva and the chief rabbi did not say anything about it. He did not tell us the gavul. He did not say to us, like he's saying now, that this is not accepted in mainstream orthodoxy. He kept quiet. And only one person had to come in the middle of the, in the, middle of the night to write on this banner, shame. Are we living in a Dora Shmat? that we have to creep around in the dark to be able to stand up for our religion? We have to hide? We can't say anything? <coughs> so what is with Kavod Shemayim? Doesn't the chief rabbi know what Chazal say on the Pasuk? En Chochma Ben Tevuna Ben Eitzah neged Hashem. Be makom sheyesh chilul Hashem. Ain cholkim kavod l'rav. If there is a chilul Hashem going on in the community. This was a tremendous chilul Hashem. That the whole of angry Jews should keep quiet. And condone such unashamedly disgraceful behavior. Is the Chil Hashem which is crying, Zakat Sedom Amora. Is a cry which is screaming to the heavens. And the chief rabbi is worried about his covet. We're talking about covet Shemayim. And what about these lectures about Christianity? That hasn't been addressed. That can carry on in the meantime. It doesn't have to give any response anymore. Do not correspond anymore. No one can speak. We're not allowed to know the reply to our questions and the, and the rabbinate of the London Beth Din. Quiet silence. We write to them, no response. We ask them to do something, nothing is done. Sarim atzru be milim ve kaf yasimu lefihem. And I want to ask further, does the chief rabbi never ever come out in public against another rabbi?
There was a report in the Jewish Chronicle on March the 23rd of this year, that's under two months ago, where the chief rabbi condemns his Israeli counterpart. He condemns the chief rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Tzach Yosef. In what the Jewish Chronicle says was something which was unprecedented. As far as they're aware, it's never ever happened before that the chief rabbi of England has condemned a statement made by the chief rabbi of Israel. Unprecedented, but he did it. What did he do it for? Did the chief rabbi of Israel allow something which was forbidden? No. He said a word which maybe was not in place. A slip of the tongue. Nothing abusive, nothing callous, nothing with intent. I heard it myself. And for this, the chief rabbi comes out in public and condemns his comments as deeply offensive and totally unacceptable. So I want to say to the chief rabbi that those comments are, are, are deeply offensive and totally unacceptable because we, the Swadi community of this country, and the Swadi community around the world are very offended by those comments. And possibly these comments were only made because it was the Swadi chief rabbi. Otherwise, we can't understand what was behind these comments for something which was innocently said, an innocent slip out of the tongue, to be thrashed in public in such a public way. So those comments were deeply offensive and totally unacceptable to many, many people. But I suppose the chief rabbi is allowed certain things which other people are not allowed to him because he's the chief rabbi, after all. So what do we need to know about Christianity? What do Jews need to know about Christianity? I'll tell you what they need to know. There is a prayer in the Ashkenazi Siddha, which they say every single Shabbat. <coughs> when the Sefer Torah is still out, before the Sefer Torah is about to be put back. The prayer goes as follows. Abba Achamim, our merciful Father, Shochen Beromim, who dwells in the high places, Berachamav Ha'atsumim, with his great and tremendous mercy. Who if called Berachamim, he should remember in mercy. Hasidim Vaisharim Batemimim, the pious, the righteous, the perfect. Kilota Kodesh, complete holy communities. Shemasru Nafsham al Kidushat Hashem, who gave up their lives for the sanctification of his name. Hanevim Vaneimim Bechayehem, who are beloved and precious in their lives. Umotam lo nifradu, and were not separated in death. Minisharim kalu, they were swifter than eagles. Me'arayot gaveru, they were stronger than lions. La'asot letzon konam, to do the will of their creator. Ve'chefet suram, and the desire of their rock. Yizkere meloheinu letovah, me'ashem remember them for the good. Imsha'at tzadikei olam, ve'yinkom nikmat dam avadav ha'shafuch. And take revenge over the blood of his servants, which has been spilled. This is part of the Ashkenazi Siddha, to be said every single Shabbat, except, except when? Shabbat Mevachim. Don't say on Shabbat Mevachim. Shabbat Mevachim is like a special Shabbat. This is, not fitting, it's too sad to say it on a special Shabbat. But it's written in the Siddur. But Shabbat Mevorchim 
in the days of the Sefirah, they say it as well. Why? What's going on? What's happening over here? What is this being said about? So I want to tell you a little bit of Jewish history. What Jews need to know about Christianity. 1096. The Crusades they went from France to go and take back Jerusalem from the infidels, the Muslims in Jerusalem. They want to take back Jerusalem. So they wanted, there were thousands and thousands of hordes going from France in the direction of Jerusalem. After starting out from their places, they thought to themselves, we're going to attack the infidels in Jerusalem. What about the infidels who live amongst us? What about the Jews? They're just as bad. So they made a slight detour and they went to the Rhinelands, Kilota Kodesh, the Kilot Shum, Speer, Worms, Mainz, Cologne. Four communities, Kilot Kodesh. When did this take place? The attack on Speer took place on the 8th of the year. There were two attacks on Worms on 23rd of the year and 1st of Sivan, killing about 800 people. The attack on Mainz took place on the 3rd of Sivan, killing over 1,000 people. Cologne was attacked on the first day of Shabbat. They were given a choice, either convert to Christianity or we'll kill you. These Kilot HaKodesh did not, were not tempted. Masru nafshama kilushat Hashem. They gave their lives up in the sanctification of Hashem's name. Whole communities wiped out, butchered, men, women and children. It was such a disaster. But the rabbis at that time, they fixed this prayer in the Siddha. To pray to HaKadosh Baruch, to take the revenge of Dam Abadav Shafuch, Not to forget, to remember for good these holy people. So that's why even the Ashkenazim who don't say but in these days of the Sephira, when this crusade attack took place, they say because this is the days when it happened. And we have lost completely our self-respect. And instead of being mitzbonen and crying when we read these words, we, we go in these same time, and we go without any shame, and we teach about Christianity. Eze busha, eze chalpa. Aboisai, we have to know what does it mean Kabbalat HaTorah? Kabbalat HaTorah, we said, to understand we are Mamlechet Kwanim Begoy Kadosh. We are a holy nation. We are raised above. We have a higher tough kid. We have nothing to be ashamed of about our way of life. David HaMelech said, V'adabra be'edotecha neged melachim belo evosh. I will speak about your commandments in front of kings and I will not be ashamed. We have nothing to be ashamed of. The chief rabbi has nothing to be ashamed of. To say what's right and what's wrong. Klal Yisrael, we're looking for guidance. Be model ha'emet. Say the truth. The Torah is Torah emet. When we call, called up to the Seba Torah, we say, Asher natalanu Torah emet. Say the truth. Be model ha'emet. To know this gvulim. These gvulim are made in, not in the sand. These gvulim are made on stone. As Mephoshim explained, 
HaKadosh Baruch gave us the seven to the, 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 the Torah. He gave it on Luchot Evan. Because Luchot Evan, when something is scratched out of stone, it's there permanently. If you scratch something out onto paper, parchment, it lasts, but eventually it gets worn away. But when it's on stone, it's permanent forever. The Torah which we have is permanent forever. Le'olam le'olamim. It applies at all times. And there's Gvulim, which the Torah gave us which we have to keep to. And we have to publicize without any shame. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And we have to have the humility to be able to say, we didn't realize these lectures were being given. We made a mistake. We didn't realize this was going on. We have to have that humility to respond to the worries of Klal Yisrael. This is the meaning of Kabbalah Torah. This is what we have to work in this time. I don't hold anything personally. Because it's, it's not a personal issue. In Chochmah, Bein Eitzah, Bein Tvuna Neged Hashem. You have to have these words written in bold. In Makom Sheish Chil Hashem, Ein Cholkim Kabod L'Rav. You don't give respect to humans. We're not talking about humans, we're talking about the covet of Hashem. We're talking about the covet of the Torah. We're talking about to say publicly what the Torah says. The Gvulim which the Torah give us, the Ratzon, Be'ez Hashem, we should be zoicher to make a true Kabbalat Torah. We should be zoicher that these days, which are days of Achana, we should use them for spiritual elevation, to work on our Midot, to work on our humility, to understand that humility is a prerequisite of receiving the Torah. To understand the purpose behind the receiving of the Torah, which is to make us a Mamlechet Kohanim Begoy Kadosh. And Be'ez Hashem, on the day Zeh, we should all be Zoche to Hag Kasher Vesameach, Hatzlocha, and Be'ez Hashem, we should be Zoche to see Binyan Beit Hamikdash, Mashiach Tzikeinu Bimhera Be'amen, Amen, Amen.